We're going to turn now overseas and to the Middle East, and Israel is facing growing international pressure to not retaliate against Iran for the missile attack over the weekend. Israel's war cabinet met again today to consider its options. Nearly all of the missiles fired by Iran into Israel Saturday night were shot down by the Israeli military with the help from the UK and the US. Meanwhile, Hamas released a new statement today calling for a permanent ceasefire. I want to reporter Josh Einiker is in Jerusalem and joins us now with the very latest from there. Josh. Liz, it's been almost 48 hours now since those missiles streaked through the sky here over the old city of Jerusalem. And almost 48 hours later, it's still not clear what action Israel will take in retribution. The White House urging it to hold off any counterattack. <laughs> Almost all those drones and rockets were blown out of the sky before they could do any damage. But nearly two days later, the fallout has only just begun over a nation already weary of war, but possibly headed even further down the path of escalation. We will continue to be prepared and poised to implement any instructions that the government gives us. The government of Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been huddled with his war cabinet, gaming out a response to the onslaught Saturday night. More than 300 drones and missiles launched from Iranian soil and targeting Israel, an unprecedented attack. The president believes that what happened Saturday night was an extraordinary military success. The White House has been on overdrive congratulating Netanyahu for a job well done in fending it off, an operation the IDF has now dubbed Iron Shield, which includes the well-known Iron Dome, which handles short-range rockets, David Sling, designed for medium-range projectiles, and Arrow 2, which targets long-range missiles, a three-phase plan that dispatched 99 percent of the projectiles that headed Israel's way. The message from Washington, you already won, move on, and don't provoke Iran into launching something even worse. Strength and wisdom need to be the same sides, the different sides of the same coin. Today across Israel, life seemed normal on this Monday afternoon, but Ariella Bernstein says people have no appetite for a new front in this war. I feel like we have a job that we need to finish elsewhere. She and her husband Avi moved their family here from Long Island. And their son spent months fighting for the IDF in Gaza. And now with just days before Passover, she wants Netanyahu to exhibit restraint and not drag his country down a one-way street to a wider war. We can close accounts with Iran another time. Um, they'll still be there, for sure, um, uh, and, I, and I, I, I dread, and I don't think I'm the only one, but I literally dread uh, thinking about going into the Passover holiday without resolution um, to the hostages. A military chief uh, late tonight said that the aggression from this weekend toward this territory of the state of Israel, quote, will be met with a response. But what that response will be at this point is unclear as the world waits to see what Netanyahu decides. Coming up on Eyewitness News at 5, New York's Cardinal Timothy Dolan is here in Israel. Today he met with the president of Israel and came away with a little insight, he says, into how he thinks decisions are being made. You'll hear from him when I see you on Eyewitness News at 5. For now, we're live in Jerusalem tonight. Josh Einiger, Channel 7 Eyewitness News.